Grass clippings are one of the most abundant and honestly misunderstood resources in the garden. Most people either throw them away, leave them in untidy piles, or just toss them into a compost heap without ever really thinking about how long they take to actually become humus, the dark, crumbly, nutrient-rich substance that, you know, turns lifeless dirt into living soil. But here's the truth. The journey from fresh green blades to true humus is not instant, and it's definitely not the same as compost. In our own four-week time-lapse tracking experiment, we recorded exactly what happens day by day and week by week. The changes are, well, dramatic. The clippings heat up, collapse, darken, and transform, but only if the conditions are right. What we discovered will change how you handle grass in your garden forever. Before jumping into our results, it's important to be clear on what humus really is. Humus is not just rotted plant matter, it's actually the end stage of decomposition where organic materials have broken down so completely that they are chemically stable and resistant to further decay. Composting can produce humus, but the time it takes depends on factors like temperature, moisture, and honestly the balance between nitrogen and carbon. Fresh grass clippings are loaded with nitrogen, and when piled on their own they heat up quickly, but they also risk matting together into a slimy mess. For humus to form, these clippings must go through both an active breakdown phase and a slower curing phase where microbes finish their work. The first few days after cutting and piling grass clippings are honestly the most intense. Our pile, about knee-high and just a bit damp from morning dew, began heating within 24 hours. Internal temperatures climbed past 55 degrees Celsius or 131 degrees Fahrenheit on day two. This heat is the result of bacterial activity, specifically thermophilic bacteria that thrive in warm, moist conditions. At this stage, the clippings are still visibly green and carry that fresh-cut lawn smell. By the end of week one, the pile had lost about a third of its height and the color was shifting to a yellow-brown. The texture had softened, but the material was far from humus. It was still in the early decay stage. By the second week, the heat had dropped to around 40 degrees Celsius, or 104 degrees Fahrenheit, as the most active bacteria exhausted the easy-to-digest sugars. The clippings began to collapse into a denser layer, and worms started showing up around the cooler edges of the pile. The smell had changed from sweet to slightly earthy, and the green was mostly gone. At this stage, fungi began weaving through the material, breaking down more complex structures like cellulose. The pile was clearly turning into something more soil-like, but it still had recognizable grass fibers. This is an important reminder that humus formation is not a quick two-week process. It's just getting started. By week three, the pile had cooled to near ambient temperature. This is when the microbial community shifted from heat-loving bacteria to slower-working organisms, actinomycetes, fungi, and beneficial decomposers that create the earthy aroma gardeners recognize as the smell of good soil. The structure had become crumbly in some spots, but in others, the clippings were still visible as flattened strands. Worm activity had increased significantly, pulling fragments down into the soil below. This stage is often where gardeners make the mistake of thinking the job is done, but the truth is, humus is only fully formed when decomposition has reached a point where no original plant material can be identified. By the end of our four-week time lapse, the material had changed dramatically. Nearly all visible grass fibers had broken down, replaced by a dark brown soft and crumbly substance. Worm castings were scattered throughout, and the smell was rich and earthy. However, in the strictest soil science sense, this was still proto-humus. It would need additional curing time in the soil to become chemically stable humus. If buried in a garden bed at this stage, the microbes and worms would continue refining it over another month or two until it reached true humus form. While our experiment tracked a natural, unaltered breakdown, there are ways to help grass clippings turn into humus faster. Mixing them with carbon-rich materials like shredded leaves or straw balances their nitrogen-heavy composition. Turning the pile every few days during the first two weeks increases oxygen flow, boosting microbial activity. Keeping moisture at a wrung-out sponge level ensures microbes have the water they need without drowning the pile. These small adjustments can shave weeks off the process while producing a more even, higher-quality humus. 
Even after the pile looks ready, worms play a critical role in finishing the humus-making process. As they consume the decayed grass, their digestive systems further break down organic molecules into stable forms that bind with soil minerals. This is why spreading your partially finished clippings as a mulch or working them into an active worm zone can be one of the most effective ways to produce humus directly in your beds. In our trial, the areas of the pile most invaded by worms were also the richest and darkest in color by week 4. Humus is the ultimate soil conditioner. It improves structure, allowing clay soil to drain better and sandy soil to retain more moisture. It holds onto nutrients so plants can access them over time, and it supports a thriving underground ecosystem of microbes and beneficial organisms. By understanding how long grass clippings actually take to become humus, you can time your composting efforts to ensure you're adding finished, stable material to your beds, rather than half-decomposed waste that may rob plants of nitrogen during its final breakdown. In our time-lapse tracking, grass clippings went from fresh green blades to nearly finished humus in four weeks under favorable conditions, with final stabilization happening naturally in the soil afterward. The process is fascinating to watch, but also a reminder that good soil building is about patience, balance, and biology working at its own pace. If handled properly, your lawn waste can become one of the most valuable resources in your garden, turning what many see as debris into the foundation of living, fertile soil. If you've ever wondered how to get the most out of your garden waste, this experiment shows the answer is in working with nature's timeline, not rushing it. Grass clippings are a gift that when treated right, will keep feeding your soil for seasons to come. Keep watching Hydro Haven for more practical, proven, and natural gardening methods that work in real life not just in theory. Subscribe now and share this with a fellow gardener who needs to see what's possible when you let biology do the heavy lifting.